pineal gland has been explained through conventional methods, conventional means, to some degree. Uh, they have figured out what it does by looking at how when light strikes your retina, there's a little nerve system here called the preganglion sympathetic neurons, and they move through, and the light transitions itself into your pineal gland, okay? When the light goes off, it signals electromagnetically to the pineal gland that it's time to go to sleep, which then secretes melatonin into your cerebrospinal fluid, which activates the whole brain's sleep mechanism, the whole nervous system, okay? So the pineal gland is very much associated with going to sleep. Well, that makes sense because when you go into a mystical state of consciousness, typically you have to go into a very meditative, very zoned out, very relaxed Zen type of consciousness. That's not an accident. So again, if therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. So when you cut off the light on the outside, the light opens up on the inside. That's the melatonin mechanism. Well, the pineal gland is activated when light goes out. Jesus also said the people who sat, sat in darkness saw a great light, Matthew 14, Matthew 4, 16. Again, the idea that it's only when, you, when the light goes out and you can activate your pineal gland that you have the full access to this knowledge. So the pineal gland also secretes another chemical. This is more recent research called dimethyltryptamine, or DMT. Uh, it's becoming increasingly popular in the New Age circuit now that people are taking these South American potions like Yopo and Ayahuasca, which is the one you're probably more familiar with. Uh, the actual dictionary definition of what DMT does is that it includes profound time dilation, time travel. This is when you're accessing the time field, right? Time is three-dimensional. It's no longer linear. You can shift time. Journeys to paranormal realms. That's like those fairy circles, the gnome circles, right? And encounters with spiritual beings or other mystical transdimensional modalities. All right, so there's the, the shape of it once again. Now, what's the big secret? The interior is filled with water. How does that seem like a big secret? Who cares? Why would it matter that there's water inside the pineal gland? Well, those of you who were here yesterday know the answer. Um, the interior of the pineal gland, the water flips in and out through time space. We'll get to that in a second. The problem that most people are having is that the water calcifies as you age. In fact, that's how they're able to figure out if your brain has a tumor when you're getting an MRI. Most people have this chunk of calcium in the center of their brain which looks white on the MRI or on an x-ray. And if that little guy is off to one side, why is that? Think about it. Because what? The tumor is pushing on the brain and it knocks it off of alignment. So our pineal gland is actually supposed to be used for transdimensional access, but instead what's happening is that we're calcifying it by our diet, by the use of fluoride in our toothpaste, fluoride in our water, by the drinking too much soda, carbonated beverages, uh, too much uh, refined fats, refined sugars, refined flours, white flour. It's, anything in moderation is okay. I'm not saying you got to go on a totally Spartan crazy diet. But this calcification is also what the Bible calls the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is on the forehead, right? Does everybody remember that from the Bible? And what was it supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that you're captured in the grip of materialism. Well, that means that you don't have your spiritual access open. That's the symbolism. The symbolism is when you look at the chakras, you actually see a dark spot up here. So that's where that comes from. Now, this is, what gets, this is where it starts getting very, very strange, okay? If you haven't already been blown away, this is, gonna where, this is where it should start to change your consciousness. The interior of the pineal gland all along the inside has rods and cones just like the retina on your eye. Do you think that maybe when they called it a third eye that they knew what they were talking about? Do you think that an eye must have a cornea and a lens and all this vitreous fluid in it like we have? The fluid is there, but you just got the retina. So there's something that appears to be happening inside it's like there's a little television in here, and you can actually get audio out of it, and you can get video out of it, and that video feed is being picked up by the rods and cones, and that's your imagination. That's the mind's eye. You actually have a retina. Have you noticed that when you visualize something strongly enough that you really do see it? You can close your eyes, but you're still seeing things. 
This is where it's coming from. Now, not, some of it obviously can happen in the mind. I'm not saying that everything that you think is, is showing up inside this little gland here. But what I am saying is that a lot of it, a lot of your contact with the other side, when you're traveling through time or when you're having a dream, the interface between your dreaming body, the silver cord, as it's called, the silver cord is anchored right here. That's where it comes from. That's why when people have an out-of-body experience, they hear a loud cracking noise and they fly out of body, the crack comes from right in here. So, the answer to why this works is that there is an electromagnetic shield that is created when the light goes out. It may be stimulated by the release of the DMT, but these two little arteries here, they don't look like much, but it's a known fact that the pineal gland has more blood flow per cubic volume than any other gland in the body. This gland has the most high amount of concentration of energy from your body of anything else. And that's because it's our gateway. So if you can start to imagine the idea that there's this complex electromagnetic shield that starts forming like this, and you see all these weird rotations happening around it, and they're all going in these different directions, what that actually, and it becomes so fast, it's like, you know, if you, if you move it fast enough, which I'm not really capable of doing, it would just start to be all red. You get a, a perfectly formulated shield around the gland. When you do that, you have now shielded off all of the electromagnetic, gravitational, and otherwise, well, not gravitational, but all the electromagnetic, the radio waves, uh, all the energy that gives us a reference in space-time. That opens up the door to time-space, just like when you shoot that little carbon-60 molecule, the little buckyball, at the slit, and it pops inside out, and it turns into a wave as it goes through. Well, there are little molecules inside this water called microclusters, and those molecules can flip over, and that's the gateway that allows you to see into time-space. So darkness activates electromagnetic activity. It feels like a pressure, a buzz, or a tone, or acceleration inside your head. Has anybody here not had that experience? Okay, no hands have gone up. When you feel, you'll hear sometimes it's almost like there's a gong or you feel like a pressure in your head. That's, now, now some people just call that kundalini activation, but what's actually happening is that sometimes spontaneously, even during the day, your pineal gland just kicks up. It's like a car engine, and it suddenly gets going, and you feel this sort of explosive energy shooting up into your head. This is actually this mechanism, this machinery of electromagnetic charge zooming around, doing all these different things to shield off the water inside to give you access. So if that ever happens, if you get that tone in your ears, just try to tune into the meditative state and get really clear and figure out what's the, what's the message of that moment. A lot of times it'll be that whatever happened right before you get the tone is something really important for your spiritual evolution. Could, could so you want... It can. Headaches can happen, but that's when there's a blockage. That's when there's something in yourself that's not allowing this to fully open. And that, at that level, deals with not being able to see yourself as a sacred being, seeing yourself as unholy, seeing yourself as impure. So it really does boil down to self-acceptance. When you're fully aware and self-accepting, you can fully open your pineal gland. That requires a great deal of work, which is what we're getting into later in this talk. So the water becomes your conduit to time, space, the parallel reality, and then your interior retina in your third eye, because you actually do have three, records the visual images. That's what all the ancient cultures painted the bindi on their forehead for. DMT seems to accelerate the activity. LSD and other psychedelics force the pineal to release DMT. It's potentially dangerous, so I'm not recommending you go out and start tripping, because your pineal can get stuck on even when you're awake, and that's the actual nature of schizophrenia, delusions, and waking hallucinations. There have been multiple studies that have been done proving that shamanic visionary experiences and schizophrenic hallucinatory experiences are almost identical. What the ancient shamans have happened to them is just about the same as what happens to schizos. It's just that the schizo is cracked, that the, the walnut is cracked, as I call it, or the acorn, or the pine cone, right? Um, if you have some of that electrical activity that doesn't know when to shut off, which could be also the melatonin, right? When the melatonin kicks out, 
It's telling you to go to sleep. That's what starts to fire up this engine. It's only when the DMT kicks out a little bit that the engine goes into full steam. But that's usually only after you fall asleep. But as you start to fall asleep, the melatonin starts to rev up the engine. Well, a schizophrenic doesn't get enough sleep. That's one of the things that every study has shown about schizophrenia. They are insomniacs. So if you do that enough, then melatonin more and more will start to uh, be synthesized while you're awake, and it starts to open your gateway, and you start getting these hallucinations. So DMT is what's cracking that protection of keeping it electromagnetically dormant while you're awake. So it does very much look like the pineal gland is a natural hypergate. Now, here's another interesting thing. Uh, a colleague of mine discovered that the eardrum inside the ear is tilted on a weird angle. That's not straight up and down like you'd think it would be or that you normally would imagine. It's tilted, and it actually tilts forward like this. So the eardrums look like this inside your head. Okay? What he found was that he could build microphones that had this orientation like where they are in your head, and he gets a three-dimensional recording. So if I were to take one of these mics and put it here in the room, and then somebody ran over through the back screaming. And then we take his speakers, because he built holographic speakers, and you pop the speakers right there in the same exact room, and you press play on the tape recording. You're going to hear that person running behind the room as if they were there. You get a holographic sound. Now, it makes sense, right? If light can be holographic, light is a vibration, why couldn't you do exactly the same thing with sound? This is how it's done. It's done by reverse engineering the way your ears already work because the human ear has a better three-dimensional tracking system than any other creature. The only creature that even comes close is the owl, which obviously for the hunting purposes. So we have a very unique hyperdimensional mechanism, and he actually also found that, the, that the, these uh, lobes of the, of the inner ear here are corresponding in the geometric angles to the uh, Great Pyramid, the angles and slope of the Great Pyramid. So this is what happens. They're coplanar with a tetrahedron inside your head, the point of which comes out through the third eye center. And of course, the third eye is at the geometric center of this. So when you're going into the pineal gland, when you're falling asleep, you're going to lie down. You're going to tilt your head like this. Which way is the, is the tetrahedron pointing now? Which way is the triangle going to be? Like this, right? And your eye is in the center. So doesn't that look a lot like this? So this is the secret, okay? There, there is a secret that has been kept right in front of our eyes. Nobody understands it. And again, as I said yesterday, I'm actually releasing this information for the first time. No one has ever made this public before. This is from deep in the black ops stuff. And I only was able to put the whole thing together from seven different witness testimonies that all correlated independently of each other. That's how I found out that it's from the pineal gland. I'm not sure that they would want anybody to know this. So I am taking a risk at revealing this, but that's why I did it publicly first. Because this is what's happening. This is why this matters, OK? Could we reverse engineer the pineal gland? We have a basic system here. We have water that flips inside out. This allows you to see over into this other realm that we already know exists, because we can prove in quantum physics that a particle turns into a wave, and the wave is spaced out in time. Or has it already been done? Has it already been done? In fact, we have to ask ourselves, what are the needs? We need a barrel-shaped or pine cone-shaped container holding water, and it would have to be a special water. Uh, then you have to have an electromagnetic shielding capability. Like I was saying, you've got to have this, this system that can do all this kind of stuff inside in order to shield it off from space-time. You have to be able to fine-tune the fields, because as it turns out, how these little vibrations run has everything to do with where it goes. It's like Google Earth. Everybody here use Google Earth? You ever seen it? You can click on something and you zoom in on it. Well, that's what the fine tuning of these fields does for you. It actually is like coordinates, latitude, longitude, and time. Uh, then you need some kind of method to pick up the visual images. Now, normally in the pineal gland, you do it with the retinal tissue. But you don't have a retina when you're dealing with a machine. So what do you do? Well. What does a television use? It uses a cathode ray, right? It's a little thing that shoots onto this sur surface, and the electrons strike the surface, and they glow. Well, an ionized gas is going to glow if you strike it with this energy. So why not squirt an ionized gas in the middle, and then that might pick up the visual images? 